tradition of the father's particulars is now an itemized process on the list of services provided by the Registrar General's Department. To tell us more about this is the CEO of the Registrar Gen CEO, Registrar General, get it right, and Deputy Keeper of Records. Charlton McFarlane. Sounds like someone who should sit around the round table with yeah, King well, Arthur. Yeah, <laughs> I should have a third on the name. McFarlane the third. Morning, sir. Welcome. Morning, morning, morning. everyone. Morning, Delia. This morning, when I was telling the viewers that you were going to be here, I, I asked the question why would the father's name not be on it in the first place? Yes, yeah, so we have different laws in, in, in different countries. In Jamaica, we our registration process is governed largely by the Registration of Births and Deaths Act, which did not or does not require that the father's name automatically be placed on the birth certificate or on the birth record. Even if it's a husband and wife? Well, in the case where it's a husband and wife, um, again, my, my recollection of the law is that it does not require it. However, the husband's um, name automatically practice, we add it once the, 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 the parents are married. Oh, Hold on, say that again now. It, it is not required. It's not required, as far as I know, right. based on the Registration of Births and Deaths Act. Right. But um, as a policy, you know, we, we, act, we, we add the father's name once the child is born to parents who are married to each other. Okay, okay. From your knowledge, what are some of the issues um, why a father's name would not be on it? Okay, well, um, to be honest, when we look at the, the data, what we realize is that many times, especially prior to 2007, and I'll get back to why 2007 is significant, but prior to 2007, we really used to register babies mm -hmm. at the home. Mm -hmm. um, mothers would have to take their child to the registration office. Right. And because of that, the father was just sometimes not present at the time of documentation. Right. So and the father has to be the there for his to name be to be... Ah. Because we don't want... I can't just errors. put Neville's name. No. Okay. Not at all. Uh -huh. Why not though? If she's, if she's the birth mother and she's telling you that I'm the father, why, why you can't take her word? Well, the truth is, Neville and Andela, we have seen where not all the time that information is correct. Mm -hmm. Right? So um, it would So not hold on. How would you know that this is not correct? Again, if she say I'm the father, and I'm not the father. How you know, sir, is like she tells Because we have seen instances where mothers would have come to us after we would have placed our father's name on the record and okay. declared to us at that time that, you know, she made a false declaration. Oh, she made and a false precisely. declaration. Right. Have you ever had, we, we, we spoke about husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So have you ever had a wife saying, well, even though he's my husband, he's not his child? I've had that. Uh, um, I've been called personally. To, to be honest, because as you know, such a situation would mean that we would just automatically go and add the father's name because Correct. he's the husband. Correct. But I've had instances where the, the mother would have called me mm -hmm. and said, Mr. Registrar General, do not add my husband's name as the father because he's not the father. You know, and I said to her, well, you know, what do you want us to do? Because a part of the birth certificate mm -hmm. would indicate your, your marital status, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? And um, she said, well, Mr. CEO, you have to be true to the accuracy of your record. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. You, 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 you enter the fact that I'm married, but you also need to be accurate and enter the fact that the husband is, is not the father. Mm -hmm. So you put the father's name on it too? We put the father's name on it, yeah. So you put husband Neville Bell and father is... No, we, we don't put the husband's name on the... We, birth certificate. We put the father's name on the birth certificate, right? Um, it does not necessarily say husband, right? Um, however, a part, another section of the birth certificate would indicate mm -hmm. that the mother is in fact... A married uh, person. Yes. How important is it for a father's name? To be on it, because sometimes you know, I think people think, left him off. Nobody puts him on. It can be a, a myriad of things. She just vex with the father at that time, and so may not put him name on the birth certificate. But but it's important to have the father's name, isn't it? It's absolutely important. There are several benefits to having the father's name on tell the birth me, certificate. Tell me. Tell me. First benefit is a simple one. You know, Neville has health insurance, mm -hmm. and he wants his child to benefit from from be able to access care at, at, at a lower rate. 
the child cannot have the insurance um, benefits from, from never without his name on the birth certificate. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. But it gets more complicated than that. If something should happen to the father and the father passes away, you know, then we have to deal with estate settlement and we want the father's name on the cert certificate. Um, if never was born overseas, mm -hmm. for, for, well, no, if the child was born overseas, but Neville is born in Jamaica and that child, no, which we are seeing more re re requests for, wants Jamaican citizenship, you know, and the only connection to Jamaica is through the father, right? Then the only proof that, that the father is indeed the father is by having the father's name on the birth certificate. Mm -hmm. And of course, the big one is filing. You know, the father is overseas and, they, you know, they want the child to come and, and join them overseas. Mm -hmm. You need the father's name on the certificate, right? And up outside of all of that as well, um, an identity, really, you know, we want it to be complete, right? And um, most times, you know, it's two in individuals come together to produce that child and we want the father's name on the certificate. I want you to tell me about the process, no, that what is really came to tell us about yes. um, the, the process to get the father's name and do you know because you're almost saying you can't believe nobody. I mean, you never say it that way, but um, you need DNA evidence for all of this? No, we don't need DNA evidence. So I'll tell you, in 2007, the RGD started a, process, a program called Bedside Registration. And what we have seen is that since 2007, the average number of records, birth records, that we are now producing with the father's name has jumped from 60% to now averaging 75%, okay. right? So for three in every four certificates, birth records that we produce is now produced with the father's name. Mm -hmm. And that, the only real intervention was to make the registration process more convenient, yeah. right? By doing it at the bedside. So when the, the dad comes to visit the mother while the mother is still an inpatient and the maternity ward, we capture that information. Yeah, so tell me the process now, is that the same, same way? The, so, so that is a simple, straightforward registration. Okay. A registration effected after that is what we call an amendment to the record where the father's name was not there first. Now you want to add the father's name. The process to do that is really simple. The father and the mother have to both declare that, you know, he is the gentleman is the father. They complete a form called a status form, which they can access on our website. Mm -hmm. And once that form is completed, we take the relevant IDs and we, we add the father's name and that's it. Mm. And all of that process can be done online. You can download the forms, you can complete them, you can upload them, you can pay online, and the only thing you need to do is to come in and collect the amended. The father can do it by himself? No, the father can't do it by himself. The mother has to agree. agree. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Right. So it, it's, it's, it's really a process by declaration, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's why we do what we call a statutory declaration. Right, and we get it stamped and recorded so it can stand up to scrutiny as evidence mm. to say that you declare to us that this is so. Because the law actually says that you, know, you are not to mislead the registrar because the, the law realized that a lot of this is based on declaration. We don't do DNA testing, not yet anyway. Mm. Right? So a lot of this is based on registration. And so in the law, it explicitly states that there are penalties if you willfully mislead the registrar. Yeah. This is ongoing right now, so it's not a program where you have that hour end in two weeks or three weeks. No, 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 no. It's ongoing. Um, we, we, there are times of the year, though, that we have special promotions around this program, namely in June, Father's Day, right? Um, but it is an ongoing program, a standard program at the RGD, that at any time you can come in line or you can go online and have the process sorted out. Yeah. I want to say to our viewers that often as adults we make decisions and take actions that later affect our children Absolutely. and th something like this is really about the future of your child it is everything else is secondary it's about the future of your child and the rgd is making it possible for you to get yeah. this done i asked this question already and you answered it you said you don't know dna is there any reason for whatever reason in life that a dna test is, is asked for, rebirth certificates. So there are times when the information that the registrar has given is not correct, right? And oh, you know it's not correct? No, um, we don't know at the time that is not correct because we rely on the declaration, right? right? However, if, if the information is not correct or if it's contested, then it goes through the court. And many times we get a paternity order 
Now, for the courts, uh, my understanding is that most times the courts will instruct us to amend the information surrounding depend the father's the name, mm -hmm. depend, uh, uh, and that amendment comes on the back most times of the DNA. So that is where the DNA comes in. Um, the, 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 the court that does that, that, not the RD. Not the RGD. Okay. So there's absolutely no reason you would ask for a DNA test? Not for, no, 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 no. Okay. All right. That clears that up. All right. Thanks a lot for coming. Yeah, man. Thanks well, for having Well you. explained. Um, tell us again online, what's, what's the, what do you call it? Hand well, our website, www.rgd.gov.jm. Yeah. And you can just click on our live web chat if you're not so clear. It's right there on our website. You get all the information you need. All right. Thanks yeah. for coming, sir. Thank CEO, you. Registrar General and Deputy Keeper of Records, Charlton McFarlane. After the break, we catch up with the former Reggae Boys head coach who call her pizza, uh, <laughs> René Simoes. And with him also will be the former president of the Jamaica Football Federation, uh, the man they call Killum Crenston. Crenston. There they are. So who calls? Who he calls Box. <laughs> <laughs> box, he calls Box, he calls Box.